last week about art as a religion, as symbolized by this cross. And this cross is not a Christian cross. It is a cross that means devotion to art, a religious devotion to art. When I was in art college, this was 40 years ago, 1967 through 69. In 1968, I had gone to college to, uh, I was a printer at the time, working nights as a, a journeyman printer, and they had a graphics department, and I thought, well, maybe I could get into the graphics department, and uh, I would enjoy that better than the printing, so I decided to go to art college, uh, California College of Arts and Crafts, to uh, get a degree in graphics, graphic design. And so um, I started, during, I went during the days, and um, I had to take all the, because I was a degree candidate, I had to take all the regular classes, you know, color workshop, some of the beginning classes, uh, lettering, things of that nature, and I also had to take English. And um, because in art schools now, usually, well, at least I don't know how it is now, but back when I was in art school, um, if a class started at 9, you're lucky if the professor got there at 9.30. Most of the time it was 10 o'clock. And the same with the students. Nobody showed up on time. It was just always, uh, they just drift in whenever they wanted. But I, because I was 30 years old, 32 years old, I was um, disciplined and I had been working all my life. And when it said 9 o'clock, I was there 10 minutes to 9. And a lot of times the door was locked. So one day at the English department, when I was taking English, um, I got there at uh, 10 minutes to 9. And of course it wasn't, it was still locked up. So I went to the library, which was, had just opened. And um, I just sat down at a table just to wait, killed some time, and there was a kind of a lazy Susan thing there with some books on it. And this book, The Letters of Vincent Van Gogh by Mark, uh, Mark Rusko, was sitting there. I just happened to pull it out and look at it. I, had, I didn't know who Van Gogh was. I had never heard of him before. I didn't even know Picasso, who he was, or that he was still alive. That's how little I knew about art. I wasn't there to be an artist. I didn't know about artists, and I didn't care. From where I came from, in a small ranch in San Luis Obispo, California, art was never talked about. And if it ever was mentioned, it was always something done by them, never by us. We didn't do art. They did art. It was something that was done someplace else, by other people and it had nothing to do with our, my, the people that I was with, my family, etc. So at any rate, here I am and, and I, at 32 years old and I pull out this book about Vincent Van Gogh. I didn't know who he was so I just started thumbing through it just to kill some time and I started reading a few passages and it literally changed my life. I could not put it down. I never had heard such things or never had dreamt there was a man of this that would could devote his life to something as this man did and suffer as he suffered. It was astounding to me. So naturally I checked out the book and later bought one and uh, there this is this is actually came out in 1962 it's the letters of Vincent Van Gogh but it's been edited down so it's mostly letters uh, pertaining to his artwork uh, to his brother Theo but he had written uh, 600 700 letters or something like that in it. and they're in three volumes that came out in 1914 that uh, have all his complete letters and I've read those eventually I read every letter twice actually of the three volumes but this was the this book was the best because it it was concentrated and this is the one I used as I used to carry this book with me everywhere when I was out painting it. I was always with me. I was always marked, just like a religious person would carry a Bible. That's the way I felt about it. It's full of passages about art, about being an artist, and the struggles and the sacrifices you have to make. 
And I find reading it today, which I haven't read it in 30 some years, I found reading it to get today so that I could talk to you about it, I find that the letters here have still have the same impact on me. I'm still fascinated by this man. Even though I have I went through a Van Gogh period, you know, 30 some years ago and I've been I haven't been doing that kind of work his style in in those, that many years. I still feel the same about the man. I'm going to read a couple little passages here so you get some idea what for those of you who don't know, he, he was a painter between uh, 1880 and 1890, just 10 years. Is all. He died at 37. He shot himself. One, after he died, one of the he had a very few friends, but this was one painter friend who knew him, but wasn't his, wasn't close to him. Nobody could get close to him because he was so erratic, so dedicated. Like It's like Martin Luther, the same way actually Vincent van Gogh was a preacher too before he became a painter. But Martin Luther was went to a monastery, and he was he was a Catholic uh, to a Catholic monastery, and he was so extreme that they like they didn't want him around because he just made everybody else feel uh, you know like they were pampering, and that's the same way Van Gogh was when he was a preacher. They finally told him to stop doing that because he was so extreme in his poverty, in his self his self discipline, and his self sacrifice. But here's what one of the artists said. Whoever has witnessed this, rest, his, this wrestling, struggling, and sorrowful existence could not but feel sympathy, sympathy for the man who demanded so much of himself that it ruined his body and mind. He belonged to a race that produces the great artists. He was a great artist. They knew it. The man knew it. Everyone that could get close enough to him knew it right away when they saw him because of his dedication and, and how well he painted. But his paintings were not accepted. They didn't say, oh, what a genius, uh, as they do now, and uh, nobody wanted his paintings. He looked like a, a bad Impressionist, and the Impressionists were barely making it at that time. They, were the, they, were, they had kind of turned the art world upside down in Paris and they were starting to get shows and they were starting to sell their works and they were starting everybody's talking about it. well Van Gogh looked like a bad impressionist it was bad enough that the people were barely accepting the impressionists which were much finer of work and his his were just like scattered and they just couldn't take it it just took another you know 30 years before he finally people realized how great he was so it isn't a, this is not an instant kind of um, Becoming an artist doesn't mean you're going to be instantly recognized as being some kind of a genius or something. It takes years. It took 11 years after he died before they had a good show of Vincent Van Gogh's work. 11 years. It was it was 24 years before his letters were ever printed. And that's when people really got to know what kind of artist he was. So you see when I tell you that take this takes time and you can't rush it and you got to, you know, this is a lifetime project. You got to do it while you're, like he did his work while he was alive, and then his basket got shoved out, shoved, pushed out there, and it barely made it because no one pushed it along except his sister in law and his brother for a while. And then some other people started picking up on it and they started moving his basket up. Eventually it moved into orbit, but it isn't a, it isn't a given. <laughs>